Action photography, as I was saying, action photography. So your subject is moving fast and you want to get a perfectly focused image, of course, but your camera's autofocus isn't quite keeping up, is giving you a little difficulty. What do you do? Hi, I'm Hayward and I have an old school tip that may be just the solution you're looking for for your fast action shots. Let's have a look. So let's look at the problem here. You have a fast moving subject, some kind of action shot you're trying to create a photograph of. It could be a race car, athlete, whatever it may be. You realize that your camera's autofocus is very fast, but with a fast moving subject, it could still struggle to keep up and give you good focus right when you need it. So what do you do? Do you manually focus? Well, if you can do that, you're a better photographer than me. So what's the alternative? Well, there's an old school focusing technique that may be just what you need here. It's called zone focusing. Zone focusing is when you pre-focus the camera for the spot where the action's going to be. And it allows you to turn off auto-focusing so when you release the shutter, the quickest possible exposure happens. The camera doesn't have to think. It doesn't have to try and autofocus. It just clicks as fast as it is capable. It won't work for every situation, but it will work for quite a few. And if you experiment, you can find ways to make this work for you. In most fast moving subject situations, you probably do have an idea where the subject is going to be when you want to create the photograph especially if you have your visualization mojo working. So here's the process. First, either manually or automatically focus on the spot or area where the, the subject is going to be or where you anticipate the subject is going to be. I'm gonna use a sample image here that I've created a diagram for how and where I focus. So in this photo, Cassie had to step forward to execute the kick. So I knew where she was going to end up. So I had her stand where she was going to end up and focused at that spot. Now, this is a portrait, so I focused on her face. However, I was shooting at F11, so I knew that I had some depth of field to work with between her foot and her face. Also, this is in studio using strobes. I was shooting at 1 60th of a second, not quite fast enough to freeze the kick. However, I wanted a little bit of motion blur to sell it as a motion photograph. Next, turn the autofocus off and make sure you do not move the camera from where you took the focus reading. A sturdy tripod helps. I love using tripods, especially in studio. Sometimes you can't. If you're doing this right, and with some practice, you can do this handheld. I've done it quite a few times handheld. The, your camera's focused, you know where your subject's gonna be, you're all set. Execute the shot when the subject moves to the spot you plan. Now it's a matter of reflexes. The better your reflexes, the better any of your photography will look. It's about the decisive moment, as Bresson said, correct? So, nail it. Keep doing it. You're going to have to do it a few times if you can. So you think to yourself, well, this is in studio. This is really easy. Yeah, but you know, I photographed some race cars too. And you're standing still if you're photographing a race car, right? And they're going through a track or around in circles or whatever they're doing. And for your own safety, I would think you can predict where they're going to be. So focus on the zone, like on the track or something where you want them to be, and you'll be amazed at how well this works. Okay, so here's some additional things you have to take into account. One very important thing is depth of field. Your f-stop is very important that this becomes a zone of focus, not a spot of focus, unless, again, your reflexes are way better than mine. Give yourself some buffer. Uh, like I said in the studio shot, I was shooting at f11, so I knew I had some depth of field. Um, if you, the faster the object, the more depth of field you may want. Again, you have to balance it with your photographic vision of how you want it to look. If you like a nice blurry background on a car doing 180, you're going to have to work that problem. The other thing you have to consider is your shutter speed, obviously. 
you have to have a fast enough shutter speed to where all your good focusing efforts don't go to waste. If you're, again, if you're shooting race cars or martial artists and they're moving very fast and you, wow, you nail the perfect focus and you're shooting at a 50th of a second, well, you're gonna get some blur and your focus efforts are kind of going to waste. So aperture, shutter speed are part of this process. Here's another wrinkle. I shoot flash almost all the time, as you may know if you watch this channel. Your flash sync speed may be a constraint on how fast you can shoot, how fast a shutter speed you can set. The good news is the speed of the strobe will help you freeze action. You're gonna to have to experiment if you're trying to freeze action with flash, with depth of field, all of it takes a little practice, but well worth it. Okay, this should get you started. I, I think you'll have fun with this. I know it's a lot of fun to play with. Let me know in the comments if this helped you or I'd love to hear your experiences with it. Until the next video. Cheers.